Hey everybody, it's Robin again. Um, this is my five month on testosterone video. And um, yeah, I, time's flying, it's crazy. Um, I looked back at my intro video before making this one and it just blew me away. All the differences, uh, my voice and uh, my face and my hair and stuff. Um, it's just crazy. and. It's an amazing journey I'm on so far. Um, I have a list prepared as usual. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was um, my dose was upped from what I was taking originally because um, I'm, I'm on like a two week schedule. I mentioned that before, but um, when I went back in to have my levels checked, my estrogen was still trying to take over the place so <laughs> the doctor um, the doctor upped my dose and since then um, I haven't really noticed any crazy mood swings or anything like I did before after about a week my I would just get moody and pissy and um, I haven't really noticed that now that my dose has been upped so that's cool and um, I am still having my period, but it's still uh, random, randomly placed. <laughs> and um, it's also, it's if there's anything between no period and like a light day, that's what it would be classified as because um, it's really just enough to make me insecure about going without any kind of protection. So, um, yeah, it's just a huge pain in the ass and it still has not gone away yet. Um, but I know these things take time, so I'm just trying to be patient and deal with it, you know. Um, I'm still having acne, um, but it's not as bad, I don't think. Uh, one of Lindsay's cousins gave me kind of a pointer on um, because I was complaining about how oily my face feels all the time and um, I just feel like I'm wiping off so much sweat throughout the day and um, she actually said to use moisturizer which I just thought would make my face even more greasy and I, I know it looks shiny right now in this lighting but um, it's it's not greasy and oily like it was before and so um, my acne that's over here isn't as bad as it was before and down here there's not as many there still are obviously but uh, it's not near as bad as it was um, just last month so the moisturizer just doing that and you know making sure to clean my face um, like I do it in the shower in the morning and then at the end of the day I clean my face also because I just feel like with the moisturizer all the dirt is just like stuck to my face so uh, it's it's been working so far uh, for me so that's cool um, some regular changes uh, the voice you know that it's been going on and hair everywhere is just um, coming in more more noticeable um, most of it's still you know fairly light and I don't I don't really have dark hair naturally so I I really don't think I'm going to be getting like dark bushy I think it's just gonna be like blonde or like strawberry blonde type of bushy but it's still coming in areas that I didn't used to be in so <laughs> I'm just hairy everywhere um, my muscle definition continues to get um, much more drastic than it was before. Um, even, you know, before testosterone, even where I thought I was pretty muscular, it still had kind of the feminine, smooth kind of curves. I don't know, just soft looking skin with, um, I don't know, it, it just didn't have the right definition. So, um, there's there's more definition everywhere and um, I feel a little better also still not really working out uh, I've just went on a couple bike rides nothing nothing too crazy but um, I'm still 
feeling better about myself, even though I haven't really worked out or really changed my eating too drastically. So um, I think it's just, it might go along with my confidence level that has just went up because I feel so good. You know, I feel more comfortable with myself. And um, so all of that, I guess, is just playing a part altogether in um, making me a little more happy and such. Um, next thing on the list, uh, oh, so I mentioned in, I think my last video, the problem that I've been having in my left eye, um, with the central serous retinopathy, it went, um, when I went in for the second visit, it was getting better. But since then, my dose was upped and my stress level was upped because uh, my truck got stolen and I have been laid off of work. So uh, I'm just really stressed out right now with different things in life. Um, I'm happy, don't get me wrong, but uh, I'm stressed. And so I think all of those things playing together um, have worked toward making that spot in my vision worse again. It's actually um, worse than it was originally when I went in to see the specialist. It's just a huge blurry spot and um, it reflects a lot of light that's coming in through my retina. And so uh, it's almost like when somebody shines a mirror in your face and um, that bright light just kind of stays in your vision even if, after you close your eyes. Uh, it's kind of like that every now and then. And so um, it's really annoying. But um, now that I am out of work right now, I don't really feel like I should be going in and having procedures done that are going to cost me who knows how much money. So I'm just kind of hoping that it, it gets better again because it's been like getting better, getting worse, getting better. So I hope that just naturally it'll go down on its own. Um, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that anyway. Um, I'm going to mention pronouns again. Uh, I know a lot of people are trying really hard. Um, it's it's obvious when they catch themselves, and uh, you know at least at least then it lets me know that they're trying. Um, but there's some people that it just doesn't even cross their mind. Um, they don't catch themselves. They just continue to say her and she when they're talking about me and um, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> I mean, um, I know that there haven't been surgical changes to me yet, um, but I've always been kind of butch since high school. And so it's been like 11 years I've been very butch. Um, and now with my voice deepening and I'm getting some, you know, I, I let my facial hair grow out for like a week or two and you probably can't see it because it's blonde, but um, it glistens in the sunlight, you know, these little whiskers I have down here and stuff like that. So I know that people can see that when they're talking to me, but when they don't even try to use the right pronouns, it's just really frustrating to me. And um, luckily Lindsay's family has been trying really hard to get it right and um, I really appreciate that. Um, there's some friends that don't get to see me very often and so when they do they think nothing of it and some people have not seen my update videos so they don't even know really what I'm going through um, but for the most part um, in public I'm getting you know sir and buddy and stuff like that. Um, although Lindsay, Lindsay brought up a good point that um, when I do get mammed or when I'm with her, if somebody says, hey girls or um, ladies, you know, typically I'm getting the wrong pronouns from females. And Lindsay brought this to my attention and um, I think she's right, there was, there was only probably one case where there was a girl that called me sir um, but for the most part it's the guys that are that are 
calling me buddy and saying sir and um, stuff like that. So I, I found that really interesting because um, usually you would think that maybe guys should know what to look for and what are similarities with themselves. But I guess girls maybe are more in tune or something. And I, I also don't wear my binder all the time. I find it severely uncomfortable <laughs> because um, like I said in the video where I talked about my binder, it, it digs in um, under my armpit. So I can wear it for like an hour or two and then it's just really irritating. So I, I typically don't wear it unless I'm going to some kind of event where I really care about what I look like. Other than that, I'm just self-conscious of people seeing my boobs and calling me ma'am. So um, that's just something else um, I guess I have to deal with for a little bit. But um, also on the topic of boobs, <laughs> nice little segue, um, they have gotten smaller. They've, they're almost, um, I want to say like deflated by about half, <laughs> maybe one third or something like that, but they're definitely lacking in filler. <laughs> so uh, that's good. I mean, I know the skin isn't going to go away, but it might be a little easier to um, kind of hide until I can afford surgery to just, you know, maybe work on trying to lose weight and trying to tone my chest muscles and all that stuff. So um, hopefully they'll just get smaller and so forth and so on. Um, also, I wanted to mention that uh, a lot of people think that I'm just transitioning all of a sudden and um, that's not so. For a lot of trans guys, um, it's kind of a slow gradual thing from you know, like butch lesbian to maybe start doing something else with your appearance, um, binding or packing or whatnot. Um, I actually have bought a packer probably three years before I started taking testosterone. So, um, and a lot of people don't know that. They weren't aware of it even being there. But um, that's how I started kind of mentally transitioning on my own. Uh, I just bought a packer and I felt really comfortable and confident with that. And um, I just thought that was amazing that just something like that, that's just like a prosthetic, you know, addition. Um, it made me feel better about myself, but I was never really comfortable with binding, like with, you know, ACE bandages, that's not healthy, um, not good for you at all. But um, until I started researching more, I didn't know there were so many products out there for trans guys. And um, so I think that's really cool that we have um, so many resources now uh, to help us feel comfortable. And it, you know, it's fairly inexpensive compared to uh, surgery with a professional to get top surgery or bottom surgery or what have you. Um, I, I just think that's really great. And um, also, I wanted to mention, this is the last thing I wanted to bring up. Um, before I started transitioning, um, when I was kind of thinking about maybe I am transgendered, you know, like I just feel like a dude and I've always kind of felt that way. Um, my friend Jessica had a book and um, a lot of you trans guys that are watching, you have probably heard of it already, but um, it's Body Alchemy. It looks like this. And it's um, black and white transsexual portraits. And um, there's some stories in there too. It's fairly informational. And um, just seeing the photos in this, reading this book, um, really kind of got my hopes up. And um, it made me start thinking more like, well, maybe this is possible for me because um, there's numerous guys in this book that have um, had the courage to get pictures of themselves taken and put in this book. And um, I, I was just like, wow, you know, I'm not the only one that's like this. Uh, you know, I just thought it was an amazing book. And um, I think Jessica knew that and she gave me the book because she knew, I think, that 
it meant so much to me. And um, so I really appreciate that because that was, that was one of the huge factors in me deciding to go through this transition. And um, another thing was uh, my friend Chandra, she, <laughs> she kind of is a Nazi when it comes to um, pretty much slapping you upside the head and telling you, get your shit together, you know what to do. And uh, <laughs> so she, she pretty much told me, you have to take the first step. You need to go, you know, do all your research, find a doctor and make an appointment. Make that call, go in, see them. You have to make that first step. And so um, I really appreciate her kind of prodding me along, you know, with a stick and lighting the fire up under my ass to get me to do that. So um, every time I do these updates, I just feel more and more happy than I did the month before. And uh, yeah, I can't wait till the six month video. Um, Hopefully, I'll be just as happy, if not more happy, in that one. Um, I do feel so much more comfortable in my skin, and I, again, I'm just so appreciative for the opportunity to be able to do this. So, um, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Bye.